right uh so what i'm gonna do i'm going to show you like uh what the assignment needs to be like how you're supposed to do your assignment right so if you are watching this uh there's uh one of the students here uh he asked me for for an assignment regarding uh, supply and demand so i'm going to illustrate how you can easily be able to identify your supply zones and your demand zones right i hope you can hear me clearly there's a bit of uh, interference and noise where i am currently but i'll try to make it as short and precise as possible so when you want to highlight your your zones right so i'm going to do an example of a supply zone and a demand zone right so what you do is you go to your monthly chart right that's step number one now on the monthly chart you need to go to your line chart now when you go to your line chart you just need to take note of the swing highs and the swing lows right that is very important the swing highs and the swing lows now where the market turned on its way to the upside right in this example you can see this is uh, USD JPY. USD JPY has been in a very parabolic trend this whole year, but we have had a swing high in the past uh, month. Now, the reason why you are going to the monthly chart to highlight those turning points is for you to get the proper supply and demand zones we are not looking for support and resistance zones here support and resistance zones you get them inside your supply zones now once you have done this on the monthly chart now you can only use the line chart on the monthly chart you see just use the line chart on the monthly chart only because that's where the higher time frame uh trend is so now once you have done that once you have done that uh, you switch now back to your candlestick chart. Now you can see here, this is the point that I marked. Let me just zoom in quickly. Uh, okay. This is the point that I marked, the swing point I was talking about. And we've had these two points here, right? Swing high and the swing low. Now you can see already, price has been in a parabolica, right? Parabolica trend. And on its way up, it's creating new levels of demand. But the last month has really moved back to the downside and potentially created a new supply zone. Now, once you have done this, right? Now, take note where the swing point is to the upside, right? Where the swing point is to the upside, that's your last up candle. That's your last bullish candle in this uptrend right that bullish candle the following bearish candle must explosively move to the downside and engulfs the previous up close candle for it to be a valid supply zone once you've recognized that pattern the bearish engulf you need to see the bearish engulf with the bodies of the candles having huge volume not small volume you don't need small volume for you to identify your zones once you've done that you come here and grab your rectangle two right and then you need to cover the last bullish candle completely the body right cover the whole body we're not going to use the wicks right the wicks that's your manipulation price action you cover the whole body with a rectangle two i'm going to redo that again you come here you grab your rectangle two you click and hold and then drag to the right right to identify your supply zone right just gonna mark it here so this becomes your supply zone this is how easy it is to identify zones yes but now there's more to this right but for those still going through their institutional supply and demand course this is the basics of it we're not going to go into the deeper uh, analysis of what we have to look out for in this scenario so you've got your last up close candle which eventually becomes your bearish order block then the following bearish candle must show impulsive 
price moves to the downside so that it validates the bullish the bearish engulfing of the last up close candle thereby defining this area as your supply zone right so that's how easy it is to identify a supply zone so when price retraces back to the zone you are looking to be a seller right so now i'm going to show you now how to identify demand zone right i'm going to go to the monthly chart euro gbp i'm sure i've got a couple of zones here and then i'm going to switch to my line chart now when i switch to the line chart now remember the line chart also you need to focus with the price that is really the levels the swing points that are relatively closer to your current price action so we've got these swing laws here number one right we've got swing law number one and then we've got swing law number two when price was moving to the upside then we've got this swing high right here right? then we also have the one in the middle of the range this swing low one two you can see relatively equal lows and price has been struggling to break to the downside so that's what you do when you're on the monthly chart you highlight your swing lows and swing points you can also highlight the current swing high right though it's in the middle of the pivot it's not going to offer that much in terms of a proper zone now the ones we need to focus on are the bottom ones because we need to highlight demand zones remember demand is higher uh, demand is lower supply is to the upside once we've done that we switch to our candlestick chart now see this swing point here that's our last up candle before price drops then we also have we have the swing point here look at those relatively two equal swing laws right you've got demand here you've got demand there Look at this swing point, swing law, demand, swing law, demand, right? That's how easy it is. Now you can even see bullish engulfing. So you need the last down candle before the expansion to the downside, last down candle before the expansion to the upside, last down candle before the expansion to the upside, last down candle before another expansion to the upside. Now that expansion now, you have to make sure that you see that it engulfs the previous down close candle the last bearish candle you see like in this instance i've grabbed my rectangle two right i've grabbed my rectangle two and completely covers the volume of the last down close candle and expand my rectangle to the right you see and then if i come here this is my demand remember the relative the equal laws here the equal swing laws this last down close candle before the expansion to the upside you can see that's where price struggled to break to the downside because it's a what it's a higher time frame demand zone right we also have a supply zone right here see? that's your supply zone it's not a coincidence that price struggled to break to the upside any break to the upside is just a relative runoff stop now focusing on the demand you see so you need the last down close candle right after that in expansion you grab your rectangle two you draw your rectangle to completely cover the volume the volume of the last down close candle which is a bearish candle thereby defining your demand zone right you can see here this is a demand right right here we've got a demand zone that's your demand zone look how price struggled to break below the gray shaded area right if we were to go to lower time frames then you see there this would have been a trade right let's go back uh let me just scroll back you see this is our first monthly demand zone look how price respected it here right you see look how price respected this was the first retest of this monthly demand and price went all the way targeting your previous swing highs remember these will be your targets then after that 
we've got a monthly supply run of stops price drops back again to this demand zone you see that monthly demand zone second no this is first retest second retest you see that retest potential run off stops you see run off stops internal range liquidity in the form of sell stops then after that another expansion to the upside so that's how you highlight your basics that's your basics in highlighting your supply and demand zones now i emphasize again this is for the guys that are still on the institutional supply and demand course how you can easily identify your supply and demand zones so yeah that's uh, that's pretty much about it uh okay another quick note uj usdjpy you can see we've got a new demand zone there price is now approaching that demand member on its way to the upside price creates new demand levels a bullish trend on its way to the downside price creates new levels of supply so that's uh, that's basically how you you highlight that's how basically you can highlight uh, supply zone uh, supply zones and uh, demand zones okay? that's how you work on that so on your assignment i hope you can uh, be able to manage but if you struggle just let me know and uh, we can i can illustrate further in class all right thank you my brother and keep well